Thank you for inviting me, and thank you everyone for joining and for attending the talk. So I'm Futsekom from Polytechnic in Montreal. Uh, well, with my team, we have been focusing recently on quality assurance of machine learning enabled systems. Right? So the goal of the research we're trying to do is to allow you guys and the community to design and build reliable machine learning based systems. And we all know that with this new specificity of the system, with the dependency of the data, there are much more issues that comes up with the nature. So we are trying to tackle all those issues on, on BINITS, issues related to data quality issues, on the specifications, implementations, and, and so on. So today I will give you a glimpse of some of the things we have been doing. So machine learning, it's, I've been reading for prime time, so we've been already deploying many systems. I'm in the room, I'm pretty sure most of us have been using some of those, of those systems. But they need to be reliable. And typically, to produce the model that we embed in the systems, we actually do produce a lot of codes. Right? So this is a typical pipeline for a deep learning systems where you have to produce code to fetch your data, to automate the learning process. And then you have to train, you have to test, validate until you can deploy. So all through this process, we're actually writing codes to actually generate models. And then as any type of programs, they often fail. And they fail a bit differently from what we do in what we see in the traditional programs. So contrary to traditional programs, the space of failures for those systems is a bit more broader, right? So you can have issues related to your modeling process. So you can have a lot of under specification issues. And then we also have implementation issues because we have to actually script all the, the code that actually automate the learning process. And we have many issues with data quality. Right? So we need to actually be able to detect those issues. And what I'm trying to share with you is some of the tools that we have been building to help with this. Because we believe that only automation can actually help going through this process. Right? If you have been trying to play with some model, you can know that debugging a machine learning pipeline can be actually very tricky. Right? Because sometimes the difference between a state of the art model and a very poor performing model can be as simple as the learning rates, right? So it's very difficult to actually find those knobs when you try to trick the model. So we try to automate this. So what did we do? So we, in this talk, I will talk about two approaches that we propose. One, it's based on static analysis. So we brought static analysis to the problem. Why we thought about this? Because then we all know that it's quick. Right? It's a bit cheaper, and it can be very effective if it's done correctly up front. So we have a tool that we built, which is Neuralint, which is actually pretty effective, and I actually encourage you to try it out. Right? So the tool can actually have been tested, so you have the detail in the paper. I won't talk about the detail in the paper. But what I can say is more how the tool works. So how did we build the tool? So the tool relies on two key components. So we have a meta model of the learning program that we had to build. Right? And then we also had a taxonomy of typical faults in a deep learning program. So in the tool, we basically automate the detection of these faults based on the representation of a deep learning program that we built based on this meta model. Right? Simple, right? OK, so the workflow looks like this. So if you have a program and then you want to use our tool, basically, basically what we do is that we extract from your program all the different features and components that we need to comply with the specification of the meta model. Then we build a representation of your program. And then based on our set of rules that we actually specify to detect the different issues, we can actually run detections on the program and provide a set of checks. And it works, and it's pretty fast. Okay. But the problem with this is that this, with static analysis, we can't really tackle the interaction with the data and the dynamicity that's in the process. Right? So to help with that aspect, we try something else that we all do, dynamic analysis, right? So we decided to actually, exp what do we do? We decided to inspect the training process of the program and extract information about the behavior of the program during the training process. And based on this information, we could actually check certain specific property, we could be signal of problem with the training model, right? So we have this approach, which it's also pretty effective. We have been compared actually with uh, SageMaker, which does a pretty similar thing. And the good news is that this approach does a bit better, so I actually encourage you to try it out. It can detect 30% more bugs than actually SageMaker. We were kind of forced to compare this for the paper, otherwise they wouldn't accept the paper. So <laughs> what do some of the rules that we actually rely on look like? So we, the tool implement 
a certain variety of checks, right? So some of the checks can be as simple as checking for parameter-related issues or are more complex as optimization-related issues, right? So an example of parameter-related issue, you can check for untrained parameters. And this is very easy to check, right? So you can extract information during the training process and then just perform some verifications, right? Some comparison. And then an example of activation-related issues. So we can check the ranges, right? So this is a common, if you have been training deep learning problem, you, can, you know that this is something that happens sometimes very frequently. And then the tool can actually report this for you pretty easily, right? We also have a lot of checks related to optimization problems, so you can check if you are fitting the, the, the data sample very well, uh, if you are having a vanishing gradients, if you have an unstable gradient, and so on. So all the checks have been implemented in the tool. I strongly encourage you to try our tool. And the flow is very simple. So there is a small overhead that comes with using the tool because we are actually instrumenting your process, so we're extracting information during the training process, so there is an overhead that comes with that. But through the experimentation and validation that we did, the overage is actually fairly well manageable. Okay? So try the tools, and that is it for me, I guess. So I, <laughs> so I wanted to raise your attention about failures occurring frequently in those systems, and the fact that the space of failure in this system is actually pretty large compared to traditional systems, and that we actually need automation to navigate this space, and hopefully these tools that we're actually building and releasing will actually help us to avoid those pitfalls and maybe stay out of the float. I think this is from Mike. <laughs> so any questions? So that's it. <laughs>